Well, folks, I can't wait any longer. I'm going to make a uh, short little series of videos here. I was uh, going to write, in the process, along with the book on magnetism, write an article, the world's first explanation of uh, the gyroscopic effect. Um, just as I have every book ever written on magnetism, I also have every book ever written on the gyroscopic effect and on gyroscopes. And, uh, of course, just as with the case of magnetism, nobody is ex has ever explained the gyroscopic effects. Now, the phenomena, uh, the empirical phenomena, of course, uh, has been explained as far as how it is quantified and uh, force vectors and whatnot, but... Uh, Nobody's actually ever explained the gyroscopic effect, and it can be easily explained with some of the cryptic notes that's left over from Tesla's dynamic theory of gravity, and uh, also my understanding of uh, force and field vectors. There's only one field, ultimately, and uh, as I've told you before through many videos, that uh, there is only two principles in the universe, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Ultimately, just inertia and force. So... I'm going to make a very short series of videos. I was going to make this maybe a few months from now because I'm so busy working on the book on magnetism. But I assure you this is the first and only video and discussion. It will be a series of videos that will lead you through more and more detailed explanations. And I'll make this so simple for you, so undeniable before, for you, that uh, you know that uh, it'll be really simple. I mean, even a 10-year-old could understand it. And if you understand what I've said about magnetism, you'll actually understand what I'm talking about regarding the gyroscopic effect. So now let's spin up the gyroscope. Looking, uh, looking top down, or if I were to turn it upside down, bottom up, bottom to top, we'll have a clockwise motion. So, most people don't have precision gyroscopes, so they probably not played in a gyroscope for a long time, so what I'm going to do now is since we have a top-down clockwise vectors, remember magnetic reciprocation is polarized. A gyroscope, is, a gyroscope just like a magnet, is an uh, incoherent mass that has been made coherent. Now by spinning up the uh, gyroscopic flywheel, what I've done is I've taken an incoherent mass of atoms in the brass flywheel. Now it is spinning at a high rate of speed, not very high, uh, clockwise. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the gyroscope in the same direction that the flywheel is moving, clockwise. You can actually feel a resistance to any movement. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an inverse force. Remember right now we have force and motion going on in the gyroscopic brass flywheel in a clockwise fashion. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a counterclockwise force vector image by using my hand. Remember, I'll say that again. A counterclockwise force vector image for the clockwise force of the gyroscopic flywheel to, I'm going to use the crude word attraction right now, since that's what most people understand. They refer to magnetic attraction or repulsion, but it's literally dielectric voidance. So, I actually let it spin down too far. Let me let me spin up the uh, the flywheel a little bit more here. So we have in. Force vector cancellation, the same way on a polarized coherent mass as we know as the magnet here, we have clockwise spin from my hand applied to the clockwise force motion of the flywheel. We have resistance, or what you would call repulsion, incorrectly so, uh, as applied uh, to the case of the magnets. Now I'm going to apply an inverse uh, force vector image, and watch what happens. Actually, I have to let the uh, the rope untwist itself occasionally. Well, I should have zoomed out a little further. I need to use a thinner string, but uh, let me apply let me apply some more speed. There's just the right since I'm doing it by hand, obviously. Right now, like I said, we have. Clockwise force motion on the gyroscopic flywheel. I'm going to apply a counterclockwise force vector image from my hand to the mass. And you'll notice what 
Well, you actually can't see it up here. The gyroscope actually flies completely vertical like this. I can actually, you know, I need to zoom out more for you to see it. But if I apply, let the string unwind. If I apply clockwise force to the clockwise force, we have a coherent force here. Now, I'm going to have to make a series of videos for you to understand this. I wanted to actually hold off on making these videos until I wrote the article that I've got an ISBN number attached to. But I'm going to explain to you the first time anybody's ever seen, first time there's ever been an explanation of what the gyroscopic effect is. Everything has to do with force coherency and force cancellation. As I said, there's two principles in the universe, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. So now, I'll just use this first video as a brain teaser to you. Why, if I apply a clockwise force and motion to the clockwise flywheel, I get resistance. I get strong resistance. But if I apply an inverse, the actual flywheel will fly upwards. You can't actually see it now, but if you have your own gyroscope, you'll actually see that the flywheel will fly upwards. So, here's the brain teaser for you. Inverse forces, one from my hand, one from the coherent applied force. Right now I have coherency of a force vector in the gyroscopic flywheel for all intents and purposes going clockwise. So if I apply counterclockwise, here, here, here you can see it's vertical, correct? Now let me let the string unwind. If I apply clockwise force in motion to the clockwise rotating gyroscopic flywheel, why will I get strong resistance? And yet the inverse, if I pipe counterclockwise, I can do it by hand without the string. Easy enough. Well, you get the point. I should have actually zoomed up more in the video. But uh, the point is the gyroscopic effect, precession, and inverse force vector cancellation is applicable not only to the magnet as pertains to magnetism, but also to the quote-unquote gyroscopic effect as it pertains to this brass flywheel upon which an applied coherent force is applied. We have coherency. It's obviously the entire flywheel can only move clockwise or counterclockwise in one direction at any one time. Now, it's stated that, uh, that the angular momentum is perpendicular to the applied force. As such would be the case, but that's not true. The force is counterclockwise, excuse me, is, uh, is centrifugal uh, to the center point of the mass, but it is spinning. Now, the, uh, the angular momentum is either, uh, is either clockwise or counterclockwise, but the applied force, if it is identical to, it is directly applicable to what you would incorrectly call uh, magnetic repulsion. That is why if I actually made clockwise rotations to the, uh, to the gyroscopic flywheel, I got uh, strong resistance. Or if I made counterclockwise... Now, people are trying to weigh gyroscopes. Here's the mistake everybody makes. They talk about gyroscopic levitation and uh, what's this face that I've got uploaded on my YouTube channel. made a bunch of uh, videos talking about a gyroscope losing weight. And of course, it does lose weight, but only if a counter image is applied. The gyroscope in any direction is spun. It's not going to lose weight. This weighs 500 and some grams, whether it's spinning or not. Doesn't make any difference. This weight stays the same. What doesn't stay the same, the co-gravitational field, is of applied force, coherent applied force. I hope you get it now. I'm actually making this video a little bit longer than I have to. A coherent applied external force is applied to this existing gyroscopic flywheel. It will lose weight. Of that, there's absolutely no question. There's nobody that can uh, not replicate that. It's been replicated a million times. The gyroscope does not change weight itself, but it will change weight if an external coherent applied force is applied at which this gyroscope will lift off like this and it will lose weight. That's been measured by countless thousands of people. 
The point is that force cancellation requires inverse applied force. That is part of it's a spectrum of the co-gravitational field that Oliver Heavyside talked Oliver Heavyside talked about in his appendix of uh, on his uh, two volume set electrical papers. He doesn't talk about gyroscopes, or he doesn't actually talk about the co-gravitational field. He talks about gravity loosely, but cleaning all those uh, references and uh, the works of Dr. Olive D. Jeffaminko and uh, also the uh, Tesla's unified uh, field theory, uh, Tesla's unified theory of gravity. And my complete comprehension of what magnetism is and what a magnet is, it uh, it was easy to extrapolate about a month and a half ago by myself um, exactly what the gyroscopic effect is. And uh, once again, it is not only uh, it's not only polarization, but also coherency. I'll talk about it in additional videos. This is just a little primer to give you an idea, something to think about. But something to think about right now, we know in a magnet we have polarization. Polarization, as I've told you in other videos, is necessitated from a center point of counter space. What we have in a gyroscopic flywheel, for lack of more in-depth clarification, you can refer to a gyroscopic flywheel as a monopole. Okay? A monopole. We have a spinning coherent. Doesn't matter if the flywheel is this way. Doesn't matter if the flywheel is that way. We have an incoherent lump of brass spinning clockwise. It's clockwise this way and it's clockwise that way. So to get force cancellation, what I have to do is apply an inverse force field image. The image is a loose term by using my hand clockwise here, counterclockwise up here by my hand. By applying an inverse force to the gyroscopic flywheel, I'm able to raise the flywheel up like this. I've showed it to you, although I should have zoomed out further on the video, obviously, but we know that's the case. I'm going to make about maybe 10 or 20 videos, and uh, if you think this first video is kind of crude, it, it certainly is. I mean, that's obviously the case. Okay, now we're going to I'll give it a head start. There we go. You can actually see the gyroscope lifting. Gyroscope lifting. If I have a slightly higher revolution, I have to make the loop larger. I have to make the uh, the uh, counterclockwise force larger. But what's happening is, is I need to use a thinner string. What's happening is that this rope is twisting because it's so thick. And I'll actually make more videos for you using a much thinner piece of string attached. But... Uh, I assure you of one thing, or two things right now. This will be the world's first explanation of the gyroscopic effect. What it is, why it is, how it is. And uh, it will be so simple and clear to you that it will be undeniable. Everything is about two principles, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. This is an incoherent lump of brass with an applied coherent, applied coherent force. For all intents and purposes to make things really simple so a 10-year-old can understand, or maybe a 10-year-old wouldn't understand, I have here a brass monopole. Okay? Not really, but... You know, for a point of clarification, as an analogy, I have a brass monopole that is spinning clockwise. The gyroscopic flywheel is spinning. I can spin it counterclockwise. All I have to do is just inversely apply a clockwise uh, force, or an inverse uh, applied force uh, image using my hand. So, uh, you should get from this introductory video on uh, the explanation of how gyroscopes work what I'm actually getting to. And... Uh, this will be the first time anybody on Earth has ever had an accurate, detailed, and uh, coherent, logical, sensible explanation of the gyroscopic effect. Now, the empirical quantification for the force vectors and the angular momentum obviously has already been established for the gyroscope, but that is a description, not an explanation. The worst thing that science ever uh, suffers from, especially when it is applied to magnetism and other things that it doesn't understand, it is ripe with bean counting. It is ripe with descriptions. When this happens, that happens. When you apply four of these, you get six of these. When you apply ten of those, that's fine. That's great. 
Especially if you want to build stuff and invent stuff. But those are descriptions, not explanations. I'm interested in the bean, not counting beans, okay? I'm interested in the, the why the bean is, the what the bean is. And I assure you of one damn thing. In this uh, short little series of videos, it might be five, might be ten, might be twenty videos. I'm going to give you a clear, concise, lucid, simplex explanation of the gyroscopic effect and why the co-gravitational field is applicable. Now, like I said, no matter how I spin this gyroscope, as I've already told you and everybody knows, I'm not going to change its weight. But I can change its weight by applying an inverse, for lack of an analogy, an inverse monopolar force vector image to the inverse spin of the gyroscopic flywheel, which will unquestionably make it raise off the ground and it will lose weight. It does lose weight. There are countless videos out there about this. Countless videos. I've already got the uh, four volume, four video set up loaded uh, from uh, what's his face, the old guy who made a bunch of videos back in the 70s, Eric Lathwaite. Eric Lathwaite, I believe. Lathwaite's his last name. He done a, did a bunch of series of videos on uh, gyroscopes, and one of the most important things he said in video number four was he said, "I've uh, defied every scientist that I know," and he knew a lot of big wig scientists to explain how the gyroscope loses weight when he applies a force inverse to its spin. Of course, he had no idea. Ultimately, he never explained how or why a gyroscope loses weight. But he he asked all his fellow PhD colleagues to explain how and why a gyroscope loses weight, and they would do nothing but roll his eyes and you know stick their noses up in the air. But they don't understand. That's fine. It's okay not to understand. What's not okay is to make bullshit up and pretend you know and tell everybody you know. We don't, okay? I mean, humanity thought 200 years ago that it knew everything. Okay, we understand this, we understand that, you know, everything is because of this, because... And then we look back on people from 200 years ago, and we go, God, those people were just fucking idiots. And 200 years from now, or even 50 years from now, or even 10 years down the road, we're going to look back on the year 2015 and go, My God, those fucking idiots back in 2015, they were just, got, they were just fucking morons. They were idiots. Every epic in nature, in human history, excuse me, has always been that way. There's some famous Roman scientist who said some 2,000 years ago, he famously said, everything that could be invented has been invented. Well, we know how much bullshit that is. Humanity is full of hubris, okay? If you think you know everything and that science understands everything because you got a you know fancy TV and radio and whatnot, and you know, you've got fancy computers, we don't really know anything. We know how to count beans, we know how to add beans, and that's all well and fine. That makes fancy gadgets, but it's not a comprehension of what the hell is going on. And uh, as I've already said now for three times, I'm going to explain to you in these uh, short um, upcoming videos what the gyroscopic effect is, and you'll have the first time ever anybody's ever seen a clear, lucid, simplex, believable, logical, um, lucid understanding of what a gyroscope is. And like I said, everything is about force and motion and inertia and acceleration. If you understand those two things, ultimately, not just what they are, it's like, well, so-and-so said, you know, that guy on the YouTube said, well, everything's about force and motion. Well, you have to understand it. If you understand it, then you'll really understand everything. Yeah, because everything is basically based on that. All the... Uh, the force modalities and field modalities, all the field modalities in nature are based upon force and motion or inertia and acceleration. So, anyway, I'm happy to introduce this series. Sorry I didn't use a thinner string. I'll make another short video here soon using a thinner string so you're able to see things more clearly. Thanks for watching.